I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will solve a problem, problem number one, for complex numbers. Complex numbers were introduced uh, to be able to solve certain equations which we could not um, solve within the real numbers. And one of the equations was something like x squared equals to minus 1. And we have introduced i as a purely artificial new number, uh, the only property of which is that this is a root of this equation, basically. And now, with generalized complex numbers, which are expressed as a times i plus b, we can say that where a and b are real numbers, now this represents a much broader uh, universe of numbers. Actually, the broadest people are uh, mathematicians are dealing with nowadays. Maybe they will invent something else. But right now, these are the numbers, uh, the broadest universe of numbers we're dealing with. So the question is, can we do anything we want with these numbers? Can we solve any equation uh, or, or, or do some operation which we know about um, within the set of these numbers? Well, here is an, an exercise or problem, if you wish. Um, for instance, we know what square root of minus 1 now is. This is i among the complex numbers. So my problem is, what is a square root of i? Well, I said everything is possible, so this is also supposed to be some kind of rational number, which has its own uh, imaginary and real part. We have to know these coefficients, a and b. Um, so this is supposed to be something of this type. And the only property which we want is that this being squared is equal to i. So basically, if you wish, this is an equation. All right, so that's the problem. Find a and b, which would, be, um, which would satisfy this particular equation, which means that you will know how to extract the square root of i. Now press pause button, think about this problem, and I will continue with the solution. OK. So we have to know what square root of i is, which means we have to solve this equation How can it be solved? Well, very easily. Since a i plus b squared is equal to i, first of all, let's write down what this actually is. This is the multiplication, obviously. a i plus b times a i plus b. And we know this is i. All right, now this thing, let's open all the parentheses and what should we have? As an uh, imaginary part, we will have a times b plus b times a i. And as uh, a real part, we will have b times b, which is b squared, a times a times i squared, which is minus a squared, because i squared is minus 1. So this is what we're looking for, right? Now we have actually an equation with two different variables um, among the complex numbers. Well, how it can be solved? Well, obviously, 
if some complex number is equal to zero, then its real time, real part is supposed to be equal to zero, and imaginary part would be equal to zero. So basically, from one equation, we actually have two different equations. This part, it's a real part. We have a real part on the left and no real part, zero on the right, which means we have this. That's one equation which we have from here. Another is imaginary parts should be equal. Imaginary part, of imaginary coefficient is one. So AB plus BA, which is two AB, is equal to one. Now we have two equations with two variables, which obviously is solvable and easily actually solvable. Because from the first equation we get that a squared is equal to b squared, which means a can be either plus or minus b. And if we can, if you can substitute the a's expression uh, into the second equation, what we will have is the following. If we will substitute a equals b, then it will be 2b squared equals 1, which means b squared is equal to 1 half, and b is equal to plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. So we have two different solutions for b. And a, as I said, was b. If we substitute minus b into this equation, we will have we will have minus 2b squared equals to 1. Right? And this does not have it does not have any roots among real numbers. Don't forget that b is a real number. Uh, so uh, there is no such thing as uh, as a real number, which we, we have to go. Actually, we invented the imaginary numbers to be able to solve these equations. Because from here, you get this. And obviously, this has no solutions. All right, so basically, the only solution we have is a equals to b is equal to either plus or minus 1 over square root of 2, which is which means that first solution is this. And another solution is this. These are two solutions, both of them represent square root of i. Well, what should we do after we solve the equation or, uh, or prove some formula or whatever? We should verify, we should check it out. So it's extremely important after you have found the solution of the equation, check if it's really true. Well, we have to check that i is equal to a times i plus b squared. That's what we have to check. All right. Let's do it for this case, for instance. 1 over square root of 2i plus 1 over square root of 2 squared will be uh, imaginary part would be uh, let me expand it so it will be easier to ok 
okay, imagine a report. <coughs> this times this, 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 will be 1 over 2. And this will also give us imaginary part, which is also imaginary, which is also one over two. How about the real real part? It's one over square root of two times one over square root of two, which is one two. One over square root of two times one over square root of two and minus one, minus one. This is zero, this is one, this is one. So, as a result of this multiplication, we have, sorry, we have one i plus zero, which is i, which is supposed to be good. Now, if I will use the second solution, which is negative, here, 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 and here. It will be negative here. Sorry, it will be... This is still 1 over 2. It will be minus 1 over 2 times minus 1 over 2. So it will be still plus 1 over 2, as it should be. Same thing here. Minus 1 over square root of 2 minus, times 1 minus over square root of 2 will, will be again 1 over 2. So this is exactly the same. Here, again, the same thing. Because we have two negatives, which will give us the positive here. So it's exactly the same here, and we get, and we get exactly the same result here. So this is also uh, the solution with the negative minus uh, over square root of 2. Now. What we have here is a very interesting uh, case when uh, we have two different solutions, actually. We have two different square roots of i. But if you remember, this is not an unusual situation. Because if I will ask you what is square root of 4, what should you answer? Not 2, it's plus or minus 2, right? So we have two solutions to this as well. So there is no wonder that square root of 2 also has plus or minus plus or minus 1 over square root of 2. So you have two solutions. I would rather put it not this way, but this way. That would be better. So, as you see, square root of something always has two different uh, solutions in this case. Which is, well, which is obvious, that's how it's supposed to be, right? Um, okay, that's it for this particular problem. If you want to continue, you can do uh, the uh, root of the third degree or fourth degree root or whatever from i just as an exercise, um, and, uh, and you will see different uh, answers, and you will see different numbers of solutions, something like uh, uh, four, fourth degree root of i uh, probably should have four different solutions. Well, try to find all of them. Uh, that's it for this test. Thank you very much.